I guess this is my first reaction video. I haven't done one of these before, but I saw this article the other day and it kind of blew my mind. So let's take a look. This is a blog post from back in 2007. This is not new at all, but it's so new to me. This is on nulacas.net. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he's sharing this article about a regular expression that you can use to determine whether or not a number is prime. Blows my mind. Let's take a look at how this works. Definitely take a look through his article and read it. He gives a great explanation. I'm going to try and give a similar explanation. And the way I want to do it is use this tool called regex 101. This is a really cool tool that will allow you to input a regex. You can play around with different test strings in here. It actually gives you an explanation. Regular expressions can be really challenging, especially if you're learning them for the first time. And a tool like this that gives you an explanation about what each one of these individual characters in the string means can really help you get your mind around what you're trying to do. Let's take a look at how this works. Let's start with some very basic characters here. We've got a caret at the very beginning, and this anchors you to the beginning of your string. This matches the start of a string. Then we also have a dollar sign, and dollar sign anchors you to the end of the string. By saying caret at the beginning, dollar sign at the end, that means we want to match the entire string. Otherwise, you're just matching a substring somewhere. Now we also have a pipe character in here, which is, as you might guess, a Boolean or. So essentially what this is saying is there's two different patterns that we're trying to capture with this regular expression. The first pattern to the left of the or, and the second pattern is to the right of the or. Both sides of the or start with our caret, which means we are anchoring to the beginning, and end with our dollar sign, which means we are anchoring to the end. So both of these capture patterns are supposed to match the entire string. And if either of these patterns match, then the regular expression matches. The first pattern is a one followed by a question mark. The one is a literal character. We're matching the character one. Question mark, though, is a quantifier. And it says we're going to match the previous token or the previous character, that is the number one in this case, between zero and one times, matching as many times as possible, giving back as needed. Let's ignore the giving back as needed for the moment. We'll talk about that more in a sec. Zero and one times matching as many times as possible. So what that means is if we have no characters in the string, if it's an empty string, that would match here because we have zero characters. If we have one digit, one character, which is in this case the number one that we're looking for, then it will match that. But it will match as many as possible out of the option zero and one. It kind of sounds like a weird way to say it, but essentially that's what's happening here. We're matching either an empty string or a string with just a single one. And what you can see happening here is if I remove everything from our test string here, up here it tells us that we do have one match. And if I add a number one, you can see again we have one match. Both of those in this case we're saying are not prime numbers, which is fine. Zero, not a prime number. One, I don't think we want to get into the definition of whether or not one is prime in this video, but for this purpose we're saying it's not, I guess. Let's talk about the second half of this expression here. And maybe to clean this up, I'm just going to remove the first half so that we can focus on what this second half does. So again, we're anchoring to the beginning and the end of the string. And the first thing that we have here, notice the green shading on these parentheses, this is a capture group. And so the idea here is that by putting some part of our string in a capture group, we're not looking for parentheses. We're saying this is a piece of the string that either I want to match on again later on in the string or just something I want to capture and use later on after in the match result that is returned from this regular expression. What is it exactly that we want to see in this capture group? Two digits in here, two number ones. The first one is on its own. There's no modifier or quantifier after it. So it's just the number one. We're matching a single digit. But then it needs to be followed by another one. And that second one is modified by this plus question mark quantifier. And there's a couple of things going on here. So notice what this tooltip said. It matches the previous token, so that is the number one, between one and unlimited times. So as many ones as there are, we can match them all, but we match as few times as possible, expanding as needed. What do those two things mean? So as few times as possible means that in a string where, let's, let's actually, for a second, let's remove the rest of this string and just have our capture group here. If I add a bunch of ones, look at what is actually captured. What we're actually capturing here is just the first two digits. So we have captured between one and unlimited number of times as few times as possible. The minimum number that we can capture is what we want to capture. If there's stuff in the string after this capture group that could match the capture group, but also maybe we want to use for other stuff afterwards, other things that we're going to capture after this capture group, we can leave those things out and only capture the minimum number possible. What does it mean expanding as needed? We'll come back to that in just a second. But as you can see here, really in this case, the minimum number that you could match is two 
once. Why do we want to just match two? Let's bring back the rest of that regular expression and talk about this. After the capture group, we have backslash one. Now backslash one is a back reference. It matches the same text as most recently matched by the first capture group. So the first capture group is that string of two ones, right? And so now we're saying we want to match that same text again. So if we matched two ones, we're going to want to match two more ones after that. And then we have a plus here and plus means between one and unlimited times as many times as possible. So plus question mark, notice in parentheses here, it says lazy. It's going to match as few characters as possible. Plus with no question mark is greedy. It's going to match as many characters as possible. Otherwise plus and plus question mark are pretty much the same, right? They're both matching between one and unlimited number of characters. Just one is going to be lazy and only match as few as possible until its match is satisfied. And the other will be greedy and say, I'm going to try and take as many characters as possible. So what this plus here means is we're going to want to match as many copies of that initial capture group as possible. So if we matched two number ones up front, we want to keep matching pairs of two number ones as we go along until the end of the string. You might start to see where this is going here. Essentially, we're going to match two numbers and then we're going to match more pairs of two digits until we hit the end. So let's go down to four number ones in this string here. Notice what happens. The group that we capture, the first capture group is one, one. That's what we expect. And then we can capture another capture group after that, another one, one. And that means this string matches this regular expression. And that means also it's not prime which of course makes sense because our number here is four. But notice that the way this capture group has worked, it has essentially told us that our number is a multiple of two because we can fit some number of pairs of two into it. If I add one more character, notice that now we have five and it doesn't match. We go up to six and now it does match again. With six, we're matching our first two and then we're matching two more pairs of those two. And so this number six matches this regular expression. Also six is not a prime number because it's divisible by two. So what happens with five? Well, we know five is a prime number, but also what's happening here is we're going to come back to this idea of expanding as needed. So what we've told this regular expression to try and find is can this string capture some number of ones up front and then continue to capture that number of ones as further sets in our string until we reach the end. And so when we have five here, we know we're going to try and capture at a minimum two, and then we're going to see, can we fit that group of two into the rest of the string? Well, there's only three characters left, so the answer is no. We can fit it in once more, and then we can't. We have this dangling one at the end. Okay, so that's where the expanding as needed comes in. Now, it's going to go back and say, okay, well, let me expand just as little as possible. Let me make this first group three characters. Can I fit another group of three afterwards? Can't do it. It's going to expand a bit more. Can I fit four? And the answer again is no. Can I fit five? No, because there's nothing left at that point. And so the string doesn't match. Up until the number of digits we have, there is no other divisor for this string and therefore it is a prime number. Now we can see this in action if we get up to nine characters in the string, because here the capture group is no longer two, it's three. A capture group of two can't fit evenly into nine, but a capture group of three can fit evenly into nine. Now we can never see a capture group of four because we know any number divisible by four is also divisible by two, but what I could do here is if we move up to 25 characters here, now you see our first capture group is five, because five is the smallest possible group that can fit into 25 and use every single character. So if this regular expression matches your string, you know that your number is not prime. That I think is just such a cool way to use regular expressions. Let's take a quick look at what this would look like in JavaScript if we were gonna write an is prime function here. This was a fun one. I think you can take a number and then a fun way to use pad end, or really we could also use pad start because we're just gonna pad out an empty string using the character one as the filler here. And then of course we can do regular expression dot test on this string if this is true, meaning it matches, then we know it is not a prime number. So we negate that. That tells us, is this number prime? So here's just a simple test. We can loop over every number from zero to 200 and we can check to see, are these numbers prime? There you go. We can see we have our results printed out. If we head up to the top where we might know some of these, we can see uh, two is prime. That's true. Three is prime. That's true. Five is prime. Seven is prime. So I guess there are kind of two takeaways here. The first one is that this particular regular expression is mind blowingly cool to me. Really, maybe the more important takeaway is regular expressions are an incredibly powerful tool to have in your toolbox, but they're also really easy to misuse. So two things to do. Number one, use a tool like regex101.com and make sure you understand exactly what your regular expressions are doing using their explanations here. You can use their references and stuff like that in order to make regular expressions that do exactly what you need them to do. The second thing is 
unit test them really, really hard. They are some incredibly terse programming. You're writing a handful of characters that have really incredible power over the types of strings they can match. And so make sure you're writing really good unit tests. You really want to make sure that you're not capturing patterns you don't expect to capture or that you're missing out on patterns that you do want to capture. So unit test your regular expressions as if they were your most complex code because they probably are. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have other regex stuff that you'd like to share, put it in the comments. If you're interested in other regex videos, let me know. I've never thought of doing these before, but when I saw this article, I really knew I had to uh, show you guys. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.